throughout our conversation here, we've touched on a lot of the different pieces of what your research shows would be the best treatment currently that, su- that is supported by your paradigm. I think it'd be helpful for people with the disclaimer, it's not follow this advice and cure your cancer, but from a research perspective, as a disclaimer, what is your research showing at this point, the nuts and bolts, because there is nuance to all this and you're not going to get into all the nuance, but what is the nuts and bolts? We know ketogenic diet is a piece of it, getting into ketosis. We know uh, stopping the, the glutamine fuel is another big piece of this, but just give us within a few minutes, the nuts and bolts of what the best research is currently showing. Like I said, is there any kind of a cancer out there, anywhere, that can survive without glucose and glutamine? Because the more you study every type of cancer and under every kind of a condition, and you can't find one that can survive on glucose and glutamine, because if you can find a tumor cell that can survive on glucose and glutamine, then we would have to reevaluate uh, some of our, where we stand on this. Um, I would have to say, do they have a, a norm? Is it possible that a cancer cell could get energy sufficiently from oxidative phosphorylation? And then we would have to be, uh, look at that more carefully. Is it, it, so far we haven't found that. And, and I think, um, uh, as long as we can continue to interrogate cancer cells and find out what they're dependent on for viability, then it becomes a clear path on, path on how to kill them. Um, or eliminate them uh, from the body. So uh, yes, we keep we we we're not we'd like to work now get more into the in lung cancer and breast cancer and colon cancer cells. We've done a lot of brain cancer, uh, and we can't find any brain tumor that can survive under these conditions. But when I look at the, um, the biology of of colon, uh, breast, and bladder and lung, I see the same under the microscope. Uh, from already ultrastructural studies done by by pathologists, I see the same abnormalities in the number structure and function of the mitochondria in a colon, breast, and, and a bladder cancer, and whatever, as I see in the brain cancer. So, so that would tell me for sure that these guys are probably going to be dependent on the same fuels as the breast tumor. So we just have to take, it, it, we have to just go through the whole list of all the major cancers. And just show that they know there's no cancer that can survive. And if there is, we really, we really want to know about it. Uh, but so far, we haven't found that. And as long as you can show that you have the same kind of a problem in all these different kinds of cancers, it's pretty heavy evidence to say we, we, need, to, we need to target those things. And that's based on the mitochondrial metabolic theory of cancer, not on the gene theory. Every one of those cancers that I mentioned, if you look at their genetic mutations, they're all different from each other. Um, And yet the field is focusing on the unique differences in these cancers because they come out precision medicine, your unique cancer and all this stuff. That's the kind of buzzwords they they have a tendency to use on television when they're inter, in, when they're um trying to tell you about how wonderful their treatments are you know we we have something for your cancer we specifically if these cancers are all the same uh, very similar then you should have one treatment treats all um very with minimal modifications for one type of cancer versus another so if we are able to show that they're all very similar there is no other uh, fuel that they can use, there's no other opportunity to, for them to stay alive, then the pl- path forward becomes more and more clear. It, 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 then you know, I've shown clearly the path forward. And this can be easily ad- uh, uh, adapted for the clinic, easily, very, very easily. So this is, the, this is what we're doing. Uh, this is what we have to do and keep doing this and doing it until we have not a breath left in our body to say that this, we cannot find any exceptions to this general rule, that they are dependent on fermentation. They get energy without oxygen. Therefore, that tells you the plan and the way to attack and destroy these cancer cells without toxicity and harm. Is it going to be easy for everybody? No. Why? Because you have to be a, a, an advocate and a participant in, the own, in your own healing process. You know, this is the thing. People have to know that if you want to get rid of your cancer, it, 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 the burden falls heavily upon your shoulders. Okay. So, and I have the science to say what you should do, but it's up to you to do, to determine whether or not you want to do that. Well, even to be preventative and to live a healthy lifestyle, you have to go against the grain and do your own research these days. Um, I think it's pretty clear. I, I, I think it's pretty clear uh, what's killing most Americans 
uh, it's high, highly processed carbohydrate foods. Um, there's no question about this. Um, it, it, it's a, it's what, what what we put into our mouth uh, that's killing us. Uh, that's causing most of the chronic diseases that we have in our society comes from what we eat. Um, it's not our genes, believe me. It's our environment and what we eat, what we are putting in our mouth is ultimately causing an imbalance of the metabolic homeostasis in our body. Obesity, okay? And then, and then somebody else who may not be obese gets cancer because that person in that, in that environment, that metabolic disturbance puts him at risk uh, for this. How do, we, how do we change? A lot of people are unaware. It's unbelievable how many people do not know that obesity will, re- will reduce how long they live on the planet. They don't know that, do they? It's unbelievable how many people don't know that being fat will reduce their life life expectancy. I'm telling you right now, being obese will reduce your life expectancy on the planet. And especially when you see little kids that are overweight. I mean, those little kids are at now a major disadvantage of having a long, a, a, a successful longevity. Every No, not everybody, but it's certainly a, a significant number of them. And it's not just cancer. It's cardiovascular disease, dementia. Are you kidding me? So I told you the last time they had a big study on the Mediterranean diet that showed that you can significantly reduce can- cancer, dementia, and um, obesity with a Mediterranean. It wasn't the Mediterranean diet. It was the consumption of foods that did not contain uh, highly, high, uh, poorly nutritious uh, processed uh, carbohydrates. That's the killer. Highly processed carbohydrates. And they taste good. And the, the problem is, I'm not advocating we get rid of that stuff. All I'm advocating is that every time that touches your lips, you put yourself at some level of risk. That's your choice, though. I mean, it's everybody's choice. We're not going to shut down all these fast food joints, and we're not going to do all this stuff. But people have to know that that stuff is putting us at risk for chronic disease. And for some people, that might impact. Many people don't care. So, I mean, what are you going to do? People don't care. Okay, well, then you don't care. Then don't, don't complain about having cancer and, and diabetes and all these other diseases. Because who did that? The pharmaceutical industry didn't do that to you. The federal government didn't do that to you. You did it to yourself. <laughs> but right? I agree with what you're saying. But the point I was trying to make was the fact that you are going against the grain when you make different choices because, you know, every corner you look, there's a fast food place oh. and processed food is everywhere in the grocery store. And and you look at even, you know, the the government uh, food guides and what, yeah. what's trickling down for people to follow when it comes to diet. You have to go against the grain and, and do your own research to live differently as as prevention or treatment we're learning yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's us, as you said from the very beginning, cancer is us. Uh, but but the, you're right. Things are made, but we're not going to go down and shut down all the fast food shops. I mean, every now and then I, I'll grab a, a burger like once every two years. And to, is it good? Oh, damn. It's unbelievably good. I mean, you ever have a Subway sandwich or one of these things? You tremble while you eat it so damn good. You know, but if you're eating them every day, it's going to kill you. You know, but every now and then it's not going to kill you. But um, I hate to be so crude like that. But, you know, the bottom line is that our society is unhealthy. Uh, we are moving into a new phase of our existence on this planet and it's chronic disease phase. And uh, there's a lot of things we are spending so much money on healthcare, all these chronic diseases, billions and billions of dollars that could be going into education, infrastructure, military. It could be going into things other than trying to take care of somebody's uh, condition uh, that's caused predominantly by the individual themselves. Yes. Uh, if you want to call it taunting by, I mean, the, the, the aroma, you, I mean, some of these things are so, I mean, you walk by the shop and you say, oh man, I got to go in there, get a taste of that, you know, but, but I think everything, is, people always say, oh, you should be moderate, moderate, everybody. That's true. But how many moderate people do you know? I mean, most people are not, are not the kind of moderate kind. Um, but these are all the kinds of issues that deviate away from what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is I do the basic research to say how we can effectively manage a disease that has wide implications in society and personal behavior and these kinds of things. But we have a strategy that could make things better. 
And then your questions are opening eyes to say why why we don't do that or, or start to initiate those kinds of approaches for management. Prevention, you know, I think most of us that know we should do and should not do, but I, I think that management is another issue. As you said, a person becomes uh, desperate, they have stage four or something, and now they don't have much time left and they want to do something that's going to help them. And and that's where uh, our our research comes in to say there are things you can do. And it would be wonderful if you could get that done at your local hospital. And if not, you're going to have to do a lot more reading on your own to try to, to, try to do the best you can. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. And I have the science to say what you should do, but it's up to you to, do, to determine whether or not you want to do that. The body will turn on the tumor and dissolve it and eat it together with the diet drug combination.